Native American history is incredibly fascinating and diverse. Before the arrival of European colonists, the United States was home to a multitude of indigenous tribes, each with its own distinct culture, traditions, and languages. Their history stretches back thousands of years, long before the establishment of modern settlements. However, there's also an air of mystery that surrounds them. Where did they come from? What was their culture and lifestyle like? How do we remember the different tribes that existed during their time? Join us as we reveal 20 rare photos of Native Americans that were discovered. Number 20. Tlingit Art The Tlingit people might not have the same widespread recognition as some other tribes, but they hold immense cultural significance. Originating from the northern parts of North America, they primarily settled in the islands and coastal regions of southern Alaska. Their incredible artistic talent sets them apart. In this image, there's a figure standing with folded arms. Now, it's unclear whether this is a photograph from the past or a piece of artwork crafted by the Tlingit people themselves. The person in the image doesn't quite fit the typical visual of that historical era. If this is indeed a form of artwork, it could reveal the Tlingit people's sense of humor, providing a unique insight into their creativity. The Tlingit are highly respected for their craftsmanship across various artistic mediums, such as carving, painting, and intricate designs. Their art often mirrors their deep connection to nature, featuring motifs inspired by animals, spirits, and the natural world surrounding them. For example, totem poles stand as iconic representations of Tlingit artistry and storytelling, serving as a canvas for their cultural heritage and traditions. These stunning creations offer a window into the rich artistic tapestry woven by the Tlingit people. Number 19. Chief Ignacio Chief Ignacio, a highly respected leader of the OT tribe among the Native American Indians. Born in 1828, Chief Ignacio played a crucial role in guiding the tribe through challenging times during the 19th century. This period was marked by severe persecution from European American settlers encroaching on their lands. Chief Ignacio's leadership skills were evident as he represented his people as part of a delegation that journeyed to Washington. Their purpose was to testify before Congress regarding the tragic events of the 1879 Mir Massacre and the subsequent uprising among the Northern OTs. The Mir Massacre was a devastating event where a peaceful encampment of Northern Cheyenne, including women and children, was attacked by the U.S. Army. This incident led to deep-seated grievances and fueled tensions between the Northern Cheyenne and the government. Chief Ignacio's testimony shed light on the injustices and hardships faced by his tribe and other indigenous communities at the hands of settlers and the government. His efforts to seek justice and fair treatment for his people demonstrated his resilience and determination in advocating for their rights. Number 18. Papoose. In this image, a woman from the Apache tribe lovingly holds her child who beams at the camera. The protective wrap around the child is known as a papoose. The term papoose traces its roots to the Algonquin language, where it originally meant child. Over time, its usage broadened to refer to Native American infants, irrespective of their specific tribe. The papoose served as a traditional and practical method of carrying infants among many Native American cultures. It allowed mothers to keep their hands free while ensuring their children remained safe and close. This method of carrying babies was not exclusive to the Apache tribe, but was widespread among various indigenous groups across North America. Among the Apache and numerous other tribes, the papoose was a crucial part of daily life. It provided a secure and convenient way for mothers to nurture and care for their infants while engaging in various activities. This practical use of the papoose highlighted the resourcefulness and adaptability of Native American cultures in meeting the needs of their communities. Number 17. Traditional Eclipse Dance Exploring Native American culture wouldn't be complete without delving into their vibrant dances. For many tribes, dance was a profound expression of their beliefs and a way of life. In this photo, members of a coastal First Nation engage in a traditional eclipse dance. This coastal First Nation settled in the Pacific Northwest coast, having their earliest known encounter with European explorers in 1792. Though the exact date of this image isn't clear, it captures around a dozen tribesmen performing a sun-coaxing dance 
which was part of their rituals during eclipses. During an eclipse, tribes performed ceremonial dances aimed at coaxing the sun to reappear. The dances held deep spiritual significance, symbolizing their connection with celestial bodies and their reliance on the sun for sustenance and life. These dances were intricate and purposeful, often involving precise movements, rhythmic drumming and symbolic gestures. Through rituals like this, tribes sought to maintain cosmic balance and ensure the return of the sun, crucial for their crops, seasons, and well-being. Number 16. Hunter Paddling This picture holds a lot of history. It shows a hunter paddling a boat in what's now called Kotzebue, Alaska. The man belongs to a tribe that's considered one of the oldest and largest Native American settlements. Back in its prime, this tribe boasted hundreds of villages and tens of thousands of members. What's fascinating is that even today, there are remnants of this ancient tribe still around. Their legacy carries forward a heritage that spans generations. The tribe from Kotzebue, Alaska, has a rich and storied past. They have roots that trace back for centuries, showcasing a deep connection to the land and a way of life deeply embedded in their surroundings. At its peak, this tribe was an extensive community, thriving across numerous villages in the region. They had a strong cultural identity, with traditions, customs, and a collective way of life that defined their existence. The remnants of this tribe that persist today continue to honor their heritage. They carry on traditions, stories, and cultural practices that echo the spirit of their ancestors. Despite changes over time, their resilience in preserving their identity is a testament to their lasting legacy. Number 15. Kahataka Girl this snapshot captures a young girl from the Kahataka tribe, taken by Edward S. Curtis during his exploration of the American West. Curtis, a renowned photographer, specialized in documenting Native American cultures. He stumbled upon this captivating scene while on an expedition, encountering this delightful girl amidst her playful moments. The Kahataka tribe belonged to the larger Pima group, primarily residing in Arizona. This collective of tribes was spread across five villages in the desert region south of the Gila River. Interestingly, the Pima people were known to be rivals of the Apache tribe, and historical accounts suggest a significant conflict that ended in a devastating defeat for the Pimas at the hands of the Apaches. This defeat led to the scattering of the Pima tribe, eventually resulting in the formation of their own distinct faction. The Pima people's resilience and their ability to reorganize after such a loss showcase their strength as a community. Despite the historical turmoil, they persisted and formed a cohesive faction, demonstrating their determination to thrive despite adversity. Number 14. Song Like, a Pueblo Man. The Pueblo people have a rich cultural history in the southwestern United States. They belong to several distinct tribes, each with their own customs, languages, and traditions, the name Pueblo itself means village or town in Spanish, reflecting their settled agricultural lifestyle. This picture features a Pueblo man known as Song Like, taken in 1899 by F.A. Reinhardt. Photographs like this one by F.A. Reinhardt are incredibly valuable as they capture moments in the lives of Native Americans during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Reinhardt was renowned for his portraits of Native Americans aiming to portray the dignity and character of his subjects. Pueblo communities are known for their craftsmanship, especially in pottery, weaving, and basketry. Their pottery is distinctive, featuring intricate geometric patterns and vibrant colors. Each design carries specific meanings and stories unique to their culture. The Pueblo tribes have their own religious ceremonies and rituals, often centered around the reverence for nature and spirituality. Their dances, songs, and ceremonies celebrate their connection to the land, their ancestors, and their cosmology. Number 13. Seahawk the Nez Perce In this old picture, we have a member of the Nez Perce tribe, captured by French explorers. The man depicted here, later named Seahawk, is dressed in his complete traditional outfit, and he looks pretty stylish, sporting intricate body markings. The Nez Perce tribe, also known as the Nisqually tribe, belonged to the Coast Salish people, residing in what is now Washington State. Seahawk, or Seal in the Lushootseed language, was a prominent leader of the Suquamish and Duwamish tribes. He's known for his wisdom, diplomacy, 
and dedication to preserving Native American rights and culture. Seahawks' legacy remains significant. His name became associated with the city of Seattle, Washington, named after him. He was a respected figure among both Native American tribes and European settlers, known for his advocacy for peace and justice. The traditional regalia worn by Seahawk in the picture represents the cultural richness and heritage of the Coast Salish people. These garments were meticulously crafted and adorned with symbolic designs that often reflected the wearer's status, achievements, or clan affiliation. Number 12. Oglala Tribe Woman In the year 1900, a photograph was taken featuring a woman from the Oglala tribe. This picture serves as a snapshot, giving us a glimpse into the life and culture of this Native American community on the plains of the United States. It's a valuable historical record that sheds light on both the individual from the Oglala tribe and the time she lived in. The Oglala tribe, part of the Lakota Sioux, resided in the Great Plains region, particularly in what is now known as South Dakota. They were known for their nomadic lifestyle, hunting expertise, and rich cultural traditions deeply connected to the land. Photographs like this one captured moments frozen in time, offering us a rare visual insight into the daily lives, clothing, and customs of Native American tribes during the early 20th century. These images became vital historical records, preserving a glimpse of indigenous cultures for future generations. Number 11. Sisters. Fred E. Miller, a renowned photographer known for documenting Native American cultures, captured an iconic image called Sisters. This photograph beautifully portrays two sisters, Whistler and Hits the One Who Rides the Gray Horse, on the Crow Reservation, also known as Absolu. Miller's work in the early 20th century became a vital visual record of various Native American tribes, capturing their daily lives, traditions, and culture. The sister's photo is a testament to Miller's dedication to showcasing the authenticity and humanity of Native American individuals. Whistler and Hits the One Who Rides the Gray Horse, depicted in the photograph, belong to the Crow Tribe, a group renowned for their horsemanship and warrior traditions. The image offers a glimpse into their world, providing a personal and intimate portrayal of the sisters. The sister's attire in the photograph also reflects the traditional clothing of the Crow Tribe, adorned with intricate beadwork and symbolic designs. Their regalia symbolized their cultural identity and heritage, reflecting the pride and significance of their tribal traditions. Number 10. Cheyenne Girl The Cheyenne, North American Plains Indians, hold a significant place among Native American tribes. They spoke the Algonquian language and lived across areas surrounding the Platte and Arkansas rivers during the 19th century. After a conflict with another tribe resulted in their settlement's destruction, they resettled along the Missouri River. This photograph captures a young woman from the Cheyenne tribe posing for Edward Curtis's camera. While the exact date of the picture remains unclear, her stern gaze suggests a determined and focused demeanor. The Cheyenne people were renowned for their skills as expert hunters and potters. Their hunting prowess was essential for survival, as they relied on the bounties of the plains for sustenance. Additionally, their pottery reflected intricate designs and craftsmanship, showcasing their artistic talents. Their history is marked by resilience and adaptation. The Cheyenne faced challenges, including conflicts with other tribes and the impact of settlers moving westward, which led to changes in their traditional way of life. Despite these challenges, they continued to preserve their cultural practices and maintain their identity. Number 9. Hashkabad Mask The Navajo people hold a significant place in Native American history and continue to be one of the most influential tribes in the United States. As of 2022, the Navajo Nation had nearly 400,000 officially recognized members, making it the largest federally recognized tribe in the country. That's a substantial number, and it gives us a hint of how many might have been part of the tribe at its peak. Like many other indigenous communities, the Navajo had their own set of deities and gods woven into their spiritual beliefs. One such deity was Hashkabad, a female figure who held considerable importance in male healing rites. This deity played a pivotal role in healing practices within the Navajo culture. In this image, we witness a man from the Navajo tribe wearing a mask as he performs a healing rite. 
What's intriguing is that these goddess-styled masks were exclusively worn by men during ceremonial rituals. The dedication and solemnity with which this man carries out the ritual showcase the reverence and significance attributed to their spiritual practices. The Navajo's spiritual beliefs are deeply rooted in their culture, guiding their traditions, ceremonies, and way of life. Their practices revolve around maintaining harmony and balance within the natural and spiritual realms. Number 8. The Moose Call This vintage photo, snapped in 1908 by Roland Reed, is a captivating glimpse into history titled The Moose Call. The scene showcases a member of the Ajibu tribe seated serenely in a canoe on a tranquil lake. He's involved in a unique activity, creating a distinct sound using hide or bark. The Ajibu tribe has a fascinating cultural heritage tied to their surroundings. They were skilled in various practices, including crafting tools and developing unique techniques for survival. One notable skill was their ability to mimic animal calls using natural materials like hides or bark to communicate or attract wildlife for hunting purposes. For many indigenous communities, such as the Ajibu tribe, the art of mimicking animal calls held immense significance. It wasn't merely about creating sounds. It was a specialized skill passed down through generations. Animal mimicry was an essential tool for survival, aiding in hunting and gathering. Number 7. Chief Dan George Between 1951 and 1963, Chief Dan George took the reins as the leader of the Tsleil Waututh Nation in British Columbia, Canada. Apart from his responsibilities as a leader, he was quite the multi-talented individual. Interestingly, he didn't start acting until he hit 60, and that's where his fame really took off. Chief Dan George was not only a respected leader, but also a gifted writer and poet. His literary talents offered insights into the traditions, struggles, and wisdom of indigenous cultures, which garnered him widespread recognition. Despite his late start, his acting career flourished. He became a prominent figure in the film industry, known for his compelling performances that often depicted indigenous perspectives and showcased his rich storytelling abilities. His roles in films like Little Big Man and The Outlaw Josie Wales highlighted his talent and brought attention to indigenous representation in cinema. Number 6. The Buffalo Dance The Buffalo Dance stands as a revered custom in various Native American cultures, alternatively known as the Bison Dance. This annual festival was celebrated across numerous tribes like the Manda, Cheyenne, Pawn, and Omaha, coinciding with the return of buffalo herds. The return of the buffalo herds held immense importance for Native American communities, as buffaloes symbolized a crucial source of food and vital resources for these tribes. Their return from migration marked the renewal of sustenance and abundance for the people. The festival became a vibrant celebration, where communities gathered to express gratitude and honor the buffalo's return through the buffalo dance. The dance was a symbolic representation of their connection with nature and the cycle of life. During this festival, various rituals and ceremonies were conducted, highlighting the significance of the buffalo in their lives. Feasting was an integral part of the celebration, signifying abundance and prosperity brought by the return of these majestic animals. Number 5. Marilyn in Vancouver In 1953, when Marilyn Monroe was at the peak of her fame, she made a notable visit to Vancouver, Canada. During this visit, she had a memorable encounter with Chief Joe Moss of the Kalano Band, a local indigenous community. Their interaction became a noteworthy moment of cultural significance. The meeting between the famous actress and the indigenous leader attracted attention and was seen as a meaningful cultural episode. This encounter also highlighted an intriguing intersection of worlds, the glamour of Hollywood, meeting the traditions and culture of the indigenous community. Monroe's interaction with Chief Joe Moss symbolized a bridge between two distinct worlds, drawing attention to the cultural diversity and connections that exist beyond celebrity status. Chief Joe Moss represented the Kalano Band, a native community in the region, known for their heritage, traditions, and connection to the land. Their meeting with Marilyn Monroe provided a platform that brought attention to indigenous cultures, shedding light on their presence and importance within Canadian society. Number 4. The Bannock Tribe The Bannock Tribe holds a fascinating history that's deeply tied to the Great Basin, spanning parts of southeastern Oregon and southern Idaho. 
Across generations, they've forged a profound bond with the land, adapting ingeniously to the challenging environmental conditions of this region. Living in such areas requires incredible resilience and resourcefulness. The Bannock people, over time, have cultivated a vast knowledge of their surroundings, mastering ways to thrive in the harsh landscapes of the Great Basin. Their understanding of the land's rhythms, plants, and wildlife has been crucial for their survival. Their adaptation skills also allowed them to navigate diverse terrains and climates within the region. From the vast desert stretches to the mountainous terrain, they've learned to utilize nature's resources efficiently, using different plants for food, medicine, and crafting. Their historical legacy encompasses rich cultural practices and traditions. Their connection to the land is woven into their stories, ceremonies, and art, reflecting their deep-rooted respect for nature. Number 3. Nampeo Artistry and craftsmanship were integral parts of Native American life, much like in any society. One remarkable artisan from that era was Nampeo, a skilled potter born in 1859. Hailing from the Hopi Tewa tribe on the Hopi Reservation in Arizona, Nampeo made a name for herself as an exceptional potter. Her name, pronounced Numpeyu, roughly translates to snake that does not bite. While this snake didn't bite, Nampeo's mastery in pottery was truly striking. She utilized ancient pottery techniques, employing traditional Hopi designs to create stunningly crafted pots. Her work not only showcased her technical expertise, but also highlighted the rich cultural heritage of the Hopi Tewa tribe. Nampeo's pottery stands as proof of her artistry and craftsmanship. Her pieces have found their way into collections in museums worldwide, spanning Europe and the United States. These collections serve as a tribute to her skill and the cultural significance of her creations. In a notable event in 2010, one of Nampeo's decorated ceramic pots set a world record for Southwest American Indian pottery at an auction in San Francisco. This exceptional piece, crafted by her skilled hands, fetched a staggering price of over $350,000. The record-breaking sale not only highlighted the artistic value of Nampeo's pottery, but also underscored the enduring demand and appreciation for Native American artistry on a global scale. Number 2. A Young Ute Woman This photograph captures a young Ute woman, taken somewhere between 1880 and 1900. The Ute people, native to the Great Basin and Western Rocky Mountains, have a rich cultural heritage that spans centuries. They lived in the regions of what is now Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico. The UTEs were skilled hunters and gatherers, and they had a deep spiritual connection with the land. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, several photographers documented various Native American tribes, aiming to capture their way of life. The photographs, like this one of the young Ute woman, offer a glimpse into their daily lives, traditions, and cultural attire. For the Ute people, their traditional clothing was not only practical, but also carried cultural significance. Their garments were often made from hides, decorated with intricate beadwork and patterns that held symbolic meanings within their community. Number 1. A Blackfoot Lunch This photo captures members of the Blackfoot tribe preparing lunch inside a traditional teepee or tent. The Blackfoot tribe was expansive, consisting of various smaller tribes. These tribes often chose to gather together for safety and a strong sense of community. Having a cookout in the tribe would likely have drawn in a large crowd from the entire neighborhood. The Blackfoot Confederacy was made up of several distinct groups, including the Siksika or Blackfoot, Kainai, Pikani, and others. Each group had its own territory, traditions, and leadership, but shared a common language and cultural background. Teepees were central to the Blackfoot way of life, serving as portable and practical dwellings that accommodated their nomadic lifestyle. These structures were made from buffalo hides, stretched over wooden poles, providing warmth and shelter, especially during harsh weather conditions on the plains. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out another of our interesting videos before you leave. See you on the other side.